This video is about nouns in the short story, Thank You Ma'am, by Langston Hughes. As we probably already know, nouns are words or word groups that name a person, place, thing, or idea. Compound nouns are nouns made of two or more words used together, and they can be one word, hyphenated, or they could be two words. Let's see an example. Pocketbook is another word for a woman's handbag. It's made of the words pocket and book. The pocketbook of Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones is a key part of this story. Now, you should know that modern pocketbooks aren't big purses like in the story. They're more like a woman's wallet, and they open like a book, hence pocketbook. What's the compound noun in the following sense? Mrs. Jones stopped, jerked him around in front of her, put a half Nelson around his neck, and continue to drag them up the street. If you understand what compound nouns are, you'll understand that half Nelson, a kind of wrestling move, is the compound noun in that sentence. Using a more specific noun like that, instead of just saying she grabbed him, helps us imagine the action of the story. Another kind of noun are common nouns. These are a general name for any one of a group of persons, places, things, or ideas. In this story, he's called the boy about 30 times. And that's a common noun. That's a common noun. Uh, there's lots of boys. Likewise, she's called the woman or a woman about 23 times. It's a very general term. On the other hand, proper nouns are a noun that names a particular person, place, thing, or idea. He's called Roger about three times in the story. It identifies him of, as one out of all the boys there are. She's called Mrs. Jones, or her full name, Miss Luella Bates Washington Jones, about five times. Also, proper nouns are capitalized, which is a special rule of grammar and usage of the language to show that we're talking about a special individual. The rules can be confusing. For example, Mrs. Jones goes into her kitchen in the story. Is kitchen a common noun or a proper noun? You might think, well, a room is a general term, so kitchen is a specific room, so it's proper. But you'd be wrong. Kitchens are a specific room, yes, but there's kitchens all over the world. So it's common. It's not capitalized. Next, we have concrete nouns. Concrete nouns name a person, place, or thing that can be perceived by the senses of sight, hearing, taste, touch, or smell. The stoop outside of her door is a part of the story. A stoop is a concrete thing, usually, which is funny because we're talking about concrete nouns, but it's something that people can sit on or walk on and touch. Likewise, blue suede shoes, they're things that we can interact with, with our bodies, to, to touch them or pick them up. Mrs. Jones feeds Roger lima beans and some cocoa in the story and a piece of cake. Those are things that we can taste and smell, so those are concrete nouns. On the other hand, abstract nouns are nouns that name an idea, a feeling, a quality, or a characteristic. These are things you cannot hold or touch, and that can be confusing, so we practice. For example, the story is set at 11 o'clock at night. Now, nighttime is a concrete thing. You can look with your eyes and see that it's night. But 11 o'clock uses numbers, and numbers are things that people made up so they could measure things. You could see 11 o'clock on a digital watch, but 11 isn't something that can make sense to something like a, a, a dog. It doesn't understand what 11 is because it's not something you can interact with through your senses. Likewise, Roger feels some embarrassment. Now we can see an embarrassed face and it's expressing the embarrassment, but it's a feeling, it's an emotion inside of us and that's what's make, what makes it abstract. It's an idea floating around 
in the emotions of a person. Uh, in a similar way, at the end of the story, Roger feels some gratitude. And we can show a person doing the things that a, a gracious person does, like hold, hold their heart because they feel good. But the gratitude is a, a quality. And, and that's very confusing, I understand. But that's why we practice. We can ask why you would choose one kind of noun instead of another when you're writing. When Roger's called the boy, he could be anyone. He could be any one of all the boys. His identity, who we think of Roger, comes from how he's described by the author, what he says, his actions, his reactions, his emotions. So we get to know Roger before we even know his name. He's only called Roger a few times in the middle of the story. And by the end, the author and Luella Bates Washington Jones are calling him the boy again as he leaves her house and goes off into the night. And he becomes just a general boy, one of the many that are out there. And in this way, Langston Hughes is able to help us understand the bigger world. Not just Roger, but Roger becomes uh, a stand-in for all the boys who are like him. So this was Nouns, and thank you, ma'am, the story by Langston Hughes. Thanks for watching.